Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to DG World 2019 where we are going to continue exploring the different decks from Team Up. Um, the last few days we updated a couple of the older decks that um, that were already pretty good and Team Up just brought them many many new cool cards. And now we are going to be exploring <coughs> a brand new concept, a uh, big credit to Joe from Omnipoke, I really liked his video and explanations um, for this deck which prompted to, prompted me to build my own version of this. So this is Jolteon GX with Greninja GX. We have Jolteon GX with 200 HP, the attack Electro Bullet dealing 30 damage and then 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, raising alert to Jet Punch by Buzzle, but we do have Electro Powers to increase that damage output. And we also have some very good attacks in Headbolt, 110 for 2 energy is really really powerful, a really nice amount. And we have the Swift Run GX attack as well, which does the same, 110 for 2 energy, but you prevent all effects of attacks, including damage, done to his Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. So a really nice way to potentially close out a game or try and close it out by making your Jolteon GX pretty much invincible. Now, as part of Jolteon, we have the 333 Greninja line. Greninja GX with its ability Shuriken Flurry can um, place three damage counters to one of your opponent's Pokemon when you evolve Greninja from the Frogadier. And Frogadier, in the same sense, does have the ability Gale Shuriken, where when you play Frogadier to evolve a Froki or even a Ditto Prism Star, I guess you may put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. So you have extra damage that way, you have extra damage with Electro Powers and also Choice Band, so it shouldn't really be an issue to take um, a lot of prizes easily and set up many dual KOs and stuff like that with Electro Bullet. Now we have a Sapdos as well from Team Up, 110 HP and the ability, or the attack rather, Thunderous Assault does deal 10 damage, but if Sapdos was on the bench, this attack does 70 more, which is a very solid number in case you need a, a big hit for one energy or even zero energy thanks to Thunder Mountain. And paired with the residual damage from Electro Bullet and the abilities we do have, um, Thunder's Assault should be dealing a lot of damage a lot of the time. Now we do have Tapu Gogo Prison Star for its Dance of the Asian's ability. It allows us to repower up the Jolteon, recycle a few of the energies that we might need in order to power them up and it also powers up or, uh, Sapdos and potentially even Lele and Oranguru which are there to support but do have some potentially powerful attacks depending what you're up against. Now supporters wise we have 4 Lily, 3 Cynthia, 1 Ericas and 4 Guzma so overall pretty solid it's what I've been gravitating towards. For most decks which is a really um, solid way to get going and then we have a really cool um, engine with a 4 Nest Ball, 3 Ultra Ball and 3 Pokemon Communication. Pokemon Communication does save us resources rather than discarding with the Ultra Ball. Sometimes you do want to thin your hand, sometimes you want to be more conservative, so Pokemon Communication gives us that option, but overall we have 10 ways to search for potential Pokemon we need. And finally we have the 4 Electro Power to increase our damage output, the single Rescue Stretcher in case we need to recover anything in particular, Double Choice Band to increase our damage output, and then the one off Thunder Mountain to decrease the cost of our attacks, one energy Head Bolt, one energy Swift Run, and zero energy Electro Bullet could come in handy along as zero energy Thunderous Assault. And we have two of Viridian Forest, which seem like the other best inclusion uh, in terms of stadiums for this deck, because it does allow you to thin your deck a little bit, and it's almost like you're playing 10 energy, but then it, throughout the course of the game, it allows you to keep uh, discarding resources, that you no longer need and you are able to find energy even after even if before or after a supporter card you did not get one and so let's jump into a ladder and see what we can actually do with this deck we have a win streak of seven surprisingly enough um, i have been practicing for the special event in costa rica that i attended this past weekend um, where i did get seventh place um, I made top 8 and then I lost in top 8, but that net me 100 extra championship points, which will hopefully be enough to get me that stipend for Germany. I'm not going to Australia this weekend, which makes me very sad. I will be, however, looking at the whole stream, which I'm really excited about, 
and um, I will be um, taking a look at the rest of um, the text and stuff and making sure that I do not miss out on another internationals ever again. That'll be my goal and I am planning to try and go super super hard. I already am planning to attend two regionals and two special events in which um, I can hopefully get a bunch of points, right? So that's looking like my goal and hopefully between League Ups and four special events, potentially five and Berlin, I'm hoping that I'll be able to um, really, really um, get a travel award for NAIC and hopefully guarantee, guarantee myself the day two travel award for the world championships now. Double Electro Charger played plus the Electro Power. So my opponent really trying to thin out his hand for the Lily. I don't think I can agree with the way he played that out. Like it seems like a waste of resources just to draw three extra cards with the Lily. But who am I to say? Okay. So unfortunately right here, we won't be able to get an attack off on turn one because we are missing that energy that we were talking about. Um, probably want to bench the Oranguru as well. I can already see how retreating could be an issue. So there's, I guess, some merit to having a one of Zerora GX in this. I will, however, play the Radiant Force to counter his shrine, which is a really good, a really good thing. And then I think this one I'm going to do. I'm going to be Radiant Force the energy that lets me look through the deck. I see that no energy are prized. Um, I had already been able to see through the deck with the Nest Bolt, but I really didn't do it. I can see that I have um, one of Lily and one of Guzma prized, along with the other Viridian City, one Pokemon Communication, one, no, not one Electro Power, uh, one Frogadier as well, so one Eevee, so, oh no, the Eevee's in my hand, so not terrible prizes by any means. I would have loved to be able to find and establish a Froki here. It's not looking like that's going to be possible, but. Now, with the Stadium and the Energy in the discard, my Tapu Koko will be uh, much better. And hopefully I can play into either a KO and Coco next turn, which is not looking very likely, but over the course of two turns I should be able to pull it off. <clears throat> and even though I am a GX deck against a non-GX deck, I should be able, I really should be able to um, get me some two price turns, which will hopefully be enough to close out games against my opponent here. So we see the second energy for the flying flip. I didn't bench the other EV because there's no reason to just gift my opponent more targets for the spread. We see a choice bend, not useful against the Coco, of course, and then we see a Cynthia. So just trying to thin <clears throat> the likelihood that this Coco go down is really not very high. And I don't think I would want to use triple electro power against the Coco. Um, is there all our super scoop ups do make sense in this deck, but in terms of space, I don't think you can afford them. Not too sure. Like maybe if you took out the support Pokemon over and Guru, maybe the Lele, but then you would be just hoping to draw support or return, which is not ideal. Now we see the double Coco and we see the Zapdos. No shrine, which is very nice. That means we are able to get a retreat up here. And, okay, so definitely want to establish a Froakie here. Yeah, definitely want to establish a Froakie. That was a nice top deck. I don't think I want to bench an Eevee just yet. I might actually just discard the Eevee because I do have extra an extra two Eevees and I only have two Joltians. And then our opponent sends us a hello, so we'll attach there. And then I have to play it on the Lele if I want to keep seeing cards here. And I should probably just go ahead and Cynthia here. I could Lily for five instead of Cynthia for six, but I feel like Cynthia is much better. I will go ahead and play one Electro Power because I don't mind the extra damage. I will instruct for one, see what I get. And it's another Cynthia, so maybe I did this wrong. I should have Electro Powered and then Instructed, and then off of that, I would have perhaps drawn to Cynthia and I could have saved 
the bench space of the tap whale in. So now the question becomes, do I want to bench a Zapdos perhaps? Do I want to communication for another Froki, for another Eevee? Do I want to keep the card? Um, I can Electro Power once more, which would deal 90 damage to the Kogo, and that would mean that um, next turn I evolve <coughs> Froki into Frogadier and I get a KO, and then I get another attack off onto something else. So that sounds like a solid play, honestly. It sounds like a solid play. And then I'm going to keep the communication because next turn I might want to attack his Zapdos with my Zapdos. Not sure. We'll see. Um, this 30 damage, who gets it? He's definitely going to spread again, right? But who would he promote? Who would he promote after I get the knockout on the active? Probably... I mean, I can KO anything. Probably not the mine. Or maybe the mine. Let's do the mine. I actually think he'll, he'd likely promote to Mr. Mime. And so what I'm trying to do here is, eventually I'll start using Headbolt. Right? There's a Shrine. So that's not very nice. There's a Kukui, so that's gonna be a lot of damage to my poor, poor Jolt in here. <clears throat> that is going to be a lot of damage to my Jolt in. We see a DC on the Coco, that makes sense. And we see the flying flip. So a lot of damage to my active, a lot of damage to my Lele as well. And then there is a frog here. So first things first, let's do the ability and take a price card here. So the Coco goes down, we take a price card, which is a region forest, a very nice price card indeed. And now I can definitely Pokemon communication the frog here away. I have 30 extra damage next turn with the Greninja. That's something I have to take into account. What I don't have is a good follow-up attacker. And no, he in fact does promote the Sapto. So I'm actually not going to KO the Sapto. I mean, I can't. Even if I wanted to, I really can't KO the Sapto. However, I do think that establishing another Jolteon here is a pretty good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the Brilliant Forest. I'm going to go ahead and bench the EV. And I don't know if you guys can hear that. I don't know why my computer is struggling with the recording of this. But anyways, I will definitely evolve. And so the question here is, do I... I mean, I could just knock out the Zapdos, right? If I use Coco Prison Star, I could, in fact, just knock out the Zapdos. Let's instruct first, see what I get. And not the best. So do I get a double KO here? Or do I try to be cute with Electro Bullet, get a double KO? Maybe my opponent has to spend a DC to retreat. Um, I'm honestly not sure. I'm generally not sure. I think I should still use this and just power up these two. Right? That seems solid. That opens up the best space for the Froki, which is very nice. And I am generally at a loss as to what to do. Do I retreat and get a knockout or do I just electro pull it and try and establish like that double potential knockout? I think I'm gonna go with the electro pull it. Pressure the mime. Um, I can always just clean KO the Coco next turn, but this makes it to where he has to spend a resource retreating, and that's the important thing. Right? That is the important thing. I can finish off the Zapdos and the mime. Oof, wow, just perfect hands all over the place for my opponent. Um, I can spend resources. some point or another I should expect um, a Lele of course even though we've seen lightning energy and DC I do believe we should expect Lele and counter energy to move the damage around we see an electro power so that's 80 damage so far on our Jolteon <clears throat> we're gonna see electro charger flipping a single heads 
which puts back one electro power. We see the shrine. Oof. So now my button is hitting for 100. Like he's he's hitting for 80 damage plus the shrine. That's 190. So this Jolton is going down. In between turns, next turn, unless I am able to draw my last stadium, right? Which is not looking very likely. Oof, this ultra wall is interesting because it does allow me to just instruct for three cards, which honestly might not be a terrible decision to make. The other two Greninjas are the other Greninjas actually not priced, and I do also have the rescue stretcher, which that is priced, which I could just end up getting right here and so i will go ahead and use this i will take the price card on the mr mine right no reason not to i'm paying a bit uh, a bit more cost effective here i get a communication not the best uh, but it could give me the greninja jacks which i already got here so Okay, so the issue, I guess, is the fact that I, I mean, I will place the damage on the Zapdos here. However, now I need to find my Rescue Stretcher off of my price cards at some point to be able to KO that last Zapdos, which seems okay. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and Swift Run here. Probably won't find too many other better opportunities to use it. I went, will get two price cards here. The Lily is fantastic, although um, what I'm looking for is the Stretcher. Well, I'll probably end up using Electro Bullet at some point, right? I will probably end up using Electro Bullet at some point, which is fine. The issue has been like the deck definitely struggles a little bit in the mid game we've only played two draw supporters we haven't getting we haven't been getting a good flow of those yeah so it's all about finding that stretcher that stretcher like we have one prize here next turn guaranteed with the jolton right unless my opponent goes for a kuzma play um or the escape rope that's fine i think i'm okay gift him Gifting him the Lele. <clears throat> it's gonna hit me for 80, um, which plus the shrine would be enough for the Coco once again to go down in between turns. However, the fact that he attacks with Sapdos means uh, there's less pressure on me to find the Greninja GX. I can Electro Bullet next turn, so probably not too, too useful at this stage in the game double tails on the electro charger <coughs> sucks for my opponent now i just need to be very careful <clears throat> in the sense that i have one gx that you can target down or two rather um, we need to try and avoid that as much as possible i will go ahead and put on communication the jolton back and grab an easy right yeah, that seems good. And I will be getting a price card here. The thing is, the advantage that I had with the extra damage counters is pretty much now gone. Right? I don't need the Electro Charger here, but I don't mind saving it, so I'm just gonna Lily for four. I do find an energy. The question is though, do I want to attach it to the AV and start getting damage on it? Probably not. Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and Electro Bullet and then place the damage over here so I can just head bolt this guy and there's my price card, a Guzma not the best, not the worst the stretcher is the key card that we are missing here and next turn I will end up hmm, so maybe a 30 on the top of the would have been better or at, at the very least I should have attached the energy probably Probably to see a stretcher. I mean, I might just use Sapdos next turn instead. Sapdos plus the Electro Power is knockout. Oh my gosh. I guess my opponent can't get a big hit in here with the Sapdos too. 
And that means if I can't find my Thunder Mountain, the Zapdos will just be going, I mean the Jolten, will simply be going down in between turns. And that will lose me the game. Or I just outright lose here. Yep, that is enough, right? That's 130 damage plus the Shrine. That is 200 damage, exactly. My opponent sends I will play it. Um, definitely this deck should struggle against Zapdos variants. Um, they are faster. My opponent had the wall time, the escape rope to bypass the GX attack of Jolten. And I gave him two prizes right there. Um, the Greninja GX having access to it probably would not have made a big difference there. And yeah. So, unfortunately, I won't be able to make this video longer and showcase another. Uh, game of the deck. I did like the concept one explained by Omnipoke. However, um, after seeing it in action, it's like it's a stage two plus a stage one deck with no way to sustain it reliably. Um, kind of like with Swamp Bird or Zoark. So I feel like that's one of the main reasons why this deck probably won't be a real competitor. It seems like a fun deck. Um, there's synergy between the cards. You need to a lot of things to go right for you, and without things like Zoark or Swamp Bird. The deck's flow is just not something you can rely on. Yeah, even though you try to make the deck as consistent as possible, you won't always be able to um, rely on getting the right cards at the right time. And um, when Choice Fan is not active, when you're not finding a flow of Electro Chargers, the damage output can be a bit underwhelming, as we saw um, against this particular opponent. But that will be all from me, guys. Don't forget to leave a like. It really helps out the channel. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow with more team up action. Thank you, and until next time, bye.